Hey guys, welcome back. It's Neon with another video. And in this video, I'm going to talk about Marvel Comics, the Disney acquisition of Fox and what that might mean for Marvel Comics. Now, if you've been watching the channel, if you've been out there, uh, you know, looking at some of the comics blogs, they've been reporting that, you know, there is a possibility that at some point, uh, Disney may decide they don't want to publish Marvel Comics anymore. They're already outsourcing comics to IDW, including their their main line, their uh, Avengers and uh, Spider-Man titles, which is uh, very surprising, but also not very surprising. Now, I think I've said before on this channel, uh, I have actually worked uh, on Disney comics off and on for the last 15 years. I'm very familiar with how Disney handles its comic book properties, and Marvel Comics is definitely an outlier because they bought Marvel as a comic book publisher. Normally, Disney outsources all of its comic book production, uh, whether it's a Mickey Mouse comic, a Donald Duck comic, uh, Disney Fairies, Pixar, whatever it is, they usually outsource those comics to a third party because, frankly, uh, printing and distributing comic books uh, isn't worth it to Disney. Disney is too big of a company. It's it's like, you know, change in the couch cushions for them. Uh, they don't deal in small margins, and comic books, for the most part, uh, are, offer very small margins to publishers, especially in 2018-2019. So, the uh, story sort of uh, began to circulate again when Jude, Jude Terror at Bleeding Cool mentioned that uh, C.B. Sobolski and Joe Casada were going to South by Southwest to make a case for the existence of Marvel as a comic book publisher. That's that's what their speculation was now. I think Joe Casada came out and denied it. Of course he's going to deny it. Nobody's going to come out and say, hey guys, our job's on the line. You know, but um, now I talked about this before on a Disney blog a couple of years ago. Again, you know, based on people I've talked to, uh, based on my own experience, you know, the way that, that Disney is handling Marvel Comics right now just doesn't make a lot of sense. And uh, especially with them trying to do all kinds of new stuff like the streaming service, they're they're rapidly expanding uh, in the parks. And they're going to be looking for, especially after the Fox acquisition, they're going to be looking to save some money, right? They're going to be looking to save money. They're going to be looking to cut out any redundancies they might have. And, you know, I think what's ultimately going to happen to Marvel Comics... Again, this is a personal opinion based on what I know of how Disney handles other comic book uh, projects is that I could see them relocating, uh, you know, some staffers from Marvel in New York to California, to Burbank, kind of like DC did, right? Uh, move those people to um, California and then they just, it sort of becomes like an office full of brand managers. It's just, you know, they'll, they'll have some editorial staff. It will never be the mighty Marvel bullpen. That will never happen again. Um, but they might have a dozen or so people that oversee production of comics projects from other publishers like IDW or Dark Horse or whoever is, is left standing, right? Because the comic book industry right now is not in terribly good shape whoever's left standing that wants the Marvel license. And frankly, these people, they pay Disney for the honor of publishing their characters. You pay Disney if you want to publish Captain America comics, if you want to you know, publish Spider-Man comics. There's like literally no risk at all uh, on Disney's end, but they do have people that oversee these projects that work in like, you know, Disney licensing and publishing. Um, but again, they're like brand managers. Uh, they're no longer editors. It's just, it's, it's going to be very, very different from how it was before. Personal opinion, this is what I think is going to happen when it's all said and done. And, uh, you know, that talk has, has been reignited in recent weeks. And um, now Disney today completed the acquisition of 21st Century Fox in its assets. And the interesting thing about this is Bob Iger, Disney CEO, sent out a memo to all employees of Disney and Fox that, uh, you know, there are going to be some growing pains. There are going to be some growing pains. And if you read between the lines, it sounds like he's preparing people for layoffs. He's preparing people for uh, a reduction of redundant business divisions, right? As they figure out how Fox and Disney are going to actually fit together. And you also have to realize that Disney is trying to build their uh, Netflix killer uh, streaming service, right? And they're, they're sinking millions and millions and millions of dollars into this streaming service and they haven't even launched yet. I mean, they haven't even started producing a lot of the, the more expensive content. They're already in the hole. And they also overpaid for Fox. They way overpaid for Fox because uh, rival Comcast drove the price up. They got into a bidding war and Disney's paying like two to three times what they actually expected uh, to pay for Fox. So yeah, 
Disney's going to be looking to cut some corners. It is very possible, I think, that Marvel Comics might be one of the corners that they cut. Um, and so let's just read a little bit about what Bob Iger had to say. So this has come from CNBC, who uh, someone had actually leaked the memo from Bob Iger to CNBC. So Disney CEO Bob Iger said there will be challenges ahead as the two companies integrate following the $71 billion deals close. Many expect layoffs in the thousands layoffs in the thousands to eliminate duplicate staff between Disney and Fox. This is very normal for an acquisition of this size, and it might come a lot quicker than people expect because I think they've given this a lot of thought. They've had many, many months to think about who's going and who's staying. Disney stands to gain key content for its upcoming streaming service through the acquisition. This is all Disney cares about right now, the theme parks and the streaming service. This is like it. In the movies, uh, yeah, the movies obviously they care about, but the movies are... Um, basically commercials, I think, for, for the theme parks kind of at this point, right? Uh, because the theme parks, you're talking a ticket to a movie is like 10 to $15. A ticket to get into Disney World is like $125, you know? So the theme park customers are actually worth more, I think, to Disney in the long run. Um, so, okay, so they're talking about... Uh, you know, all the changes that may come. They're speculating there are going to be layoffs. I agree. I think there absolutely are going to be layoffs. Um, now, this is Bob Iger's original memo. So, subject a historic day for our company. Uh, this went out both to Disney and Fox employees. I'm proud to announce the acquisition is complete. 21st Century Fox is now part of the Walt Disney Company. I'd like to welcome our new colleagues and thank employees on both sides of the deal for your patience and perseverance as we work through the lengthy acquisition and regulatory processes. Our acquisition of 21st Century Fox was driven by our strong belief that the addition of these great businesses, brands, franchises, and talent will allow us to move faster, reach farther, and aim higher. Faster, further, higher. That sounds familiar. That sounds familiar, Bob. Uh, especially when it comes to building direct connections with consumers. I wish I could tell you that the hardest part is behind us, that closing the deal was the finish line rather than just the next milestone. What lies ahead is the challenging work of uniting our businesses to create a dynamic global entertainment company with the content, the platforms, and the reach to deliver industry-defining experiences, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so here's where it gets really interesting. Okay, uh, our, yeah, they're talking about efficiency. Anytime you talk about efficiency and effectiveness, you're talking about layoffs. Our integration process will be an evolution with some businesses impacted more than others. We've made many critical decisions already, but some areas still require further evaluation. Translation. Um, yeah, we're going to trim the fat. We're going to get rid of the dead weight. We have to. We have to. We have to jettison some weight. They've already made decisions about who's going to get cut, but they may cut some more people. That's what he's saying. He said that they've actually had time to think about it. I really do think when it's all said and done that Marvel Comics as a comic book publisher in new york as it is right now is is not going to happen especially since dc has already moved people out to the west coast and we know how little comic books actually mean to the walt disney company i think they'll take the best people and move them into movies or tv uh they'll take some other people and move them into uh overseer roles in their brand uh, management division at marvel studios or whatever but the mighty marvel bullpen I think in the very near future is going to be gone forever. Uh, it already is basically. They're not even at, at uh, Park Avenue anymore. Um, okay, so we may not have answers to all your questions at this moment, but we understand how vital information is and we're committed to moving as quickly as possible to provide clarity regarding how your role may be impacted. Uh, we're going to let you know as soon as possible whether or not you're going to be fired whether or not you're getting a pink slip. Having been on both sides of numerous acquisitions during my career, I have a deep appreciation for how this one impacts everyone involved on both a personal and professional level. I understand the challenges and ask for your continued patience in the days to come as we combine this collection of great assets to create the world's premier entertainment company. Um, so yeah, you may or may not get fired. You may or may not get laid off. We'll let you know. Um, we'll let you know as soon as we can. That's basically what he's He's saying, so now go back to the talk of uh, Sobolski and Casada basically going to South by Southwest to justify the existence of Marvel Comics as a comic book publisher, and you start to see the bigger picture. Now, I know Casada has said that is not the case, and again, don't believe anything coming from a higher up at Marvel, because 
even if it were the case, they're not going to tell the general public, right? You, you've got to have that perception. The perception is everything. And if you give out a perception that you are failing, that your job is on the line, then the internet is going to pounce. Your, your uh, uh, business rivals are going to pounce. And, um, you know, you might actually uh, bring it about. It might actually become a self-fulfilling prophecy. So even if Joe Quesada and C.B. Sobolski think there are problems at Marvel, uh, they are not going to come out and say it because I think they're being watched just like so many other people at Disney. They're being watched to see where they can be cut where they can be cut because Disney is going to be trying to save some money. So personal opinion based on what I know of Disney and, and talking to people uh, close to the situation off and on throughout the years, I think the day is coming where Marvel Comics is a publisher. It's just, it's, it doesn't make sense. It just doesn't make sense. So please subscribe to Clownfish TV for pop culture, news, views, rants, gaming videos, art videos, and more. This has been Neon. I will talk to you later. Hey guys, thanks for watching Clownfish TV. Please consider supporting the channel. Go to clownfishsupport.com. That's clownfishsupport.com. And if you want to join our community, go to clownfishtalk.com. That's clownfishtalk.com. Please subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.